Hi folks, Greg Marshawn here. Welcome to another episode of the Virtual Instructor-Led Training Program brought to you by the Service Sales Academy. Let's talk this time about selling cooling system service. All right, we, we talked about the technical aspects of the cooling system. It's not how complex it was, but let's talk about selling cooling system service. Remember the buying process, right? I'm gonna keep beating this into your heads. The buying process, especially with preventative maintenance items like cooling system service, has to begin with need recognition. We, we as a consumer have to recognize a need for something, then we gather information about it, we figure out what our options are, we make a decision, and then there's some post-purchase behavior. But it's the need recognition that's so challenging, right? Because the problem here is that there is little need recognition surrounding engine coolant and the cooling system until there's a failure. The industry has historically not done an awesome job connecting certain repairs to the lack of cooling system maintenance. We don't, we don't always talk about the fact that, oh yeah, you know what, Mr. Johnson, you need, a, you need a, a water pump today. I don't know how well you've maintained the automobile, but you know what? Sometimes not replacing coolant can damage a water pump. We have to be a little more gentle than that, explaining it to the customer, but, but we don't always understand enough to educate the customer on exactly what goes wrong if we don't replace coolant now. And so they don't connect the lack of maintenance today with that expensive repair down the line. And there's, there's a, a, sometimes a poor recognition of cooling system components as, as maintenance items too. We think of them as, as failure items that we'll fix when they break rather than making them a maintenance item. When it comes to water pumps, we've gotten better at it because of timing belts and we'll generally see the sense in replacing a, a water pump when we do a timing belt. But with other, other items, radiator caps, even coolant, we don't do as good a job with it. You've gotta know your stuff in order to create need recognition. Know your stuff, get some technical knowledge, check out the technical knowledge for service advisor videos in this, in this Service Sales Academy program. Have some visuals handy at the service counter. You know, I, and I know I'm always saying this, and so it seems some days like you ought to have a huge library of stuff surrounding you at the service counter. It doesn't have to be that much. But when you're gonna sell some of the preventative maintenance items, whether it's brake fluid exchange or transmission service or cooling system service in this case, have some visuals there. At the very least, have some fluid comparison uh, cards or, or trays there so that you can have a visual for the customer. Use your sales tools, get really good at using your sales tools. And that can be video, could be photos, could be fluid comparison trays, as I mentioned a minute ago, it could be the, the OEM recommendations. Get used to recognizing and using these sales tools when it comes to selling preventative maintenance. Now, I, I wanna talk briefly about the cooling system flush versus the cooling system service. We talked a little bit about flushing in the transmission program. Uh, the cooling system flushing is not as, as hazardous to the longevity of the vehicle as transmission fluid flushing, in my opinion, is. The transmission, flushing and transmission can stir up a lot of crap and it can stir up a lot of stuff that's gonna plug a lot of things. Flushing a cooling system is gonna stir some things up, but there aren't as many narrow passageways in the, in the coolant system as there are in a transmission to get plugged. So I don't mind flushing the cooling system as much. I am hesitant, however, to flush any system above 150,000 miles. And that includes fuel injectors, that, that includes all kinds of things because when the system is that old, when, when you know that much debris has accumulated, that much stuff has accumulated in the system, you're gonna stir it up and you may or may not get it all out. Cooling system service certainly implies more of a value than cooling system flush in this case though. All right, and that's what I would encourage you. Flush, flush people think of sticking a hose in the system, flushing it out, and fill it, filling it back up. Full cooling system service implies more value. And you really, really want to sell value, right? You can create a more complete service with higher gross profits if you sell a cooling system service rather than just the cooling system flush. We don't want to just sell a bunch of coolant and a little bit of labor to go with it. We want to sell a full service. We want to get, get the margin on the parts and we want to get a little bit more labor out of it so that it's profitable and extends the, the life of that automobile because you can provide longer vehicle longevity 
and lower maintenance costs to your customer by selling a cooling system service. So it benefits everybody. Let's talk about lifetime too. We mentioned this in the transmission program as well. Lifetime fluids, really? Manufacturer says it, it lasts a lifetime. That must mean I never need to change it. Manufacturers don't necessarily mean that. That's a little bit of marketing sales hype stuff, right? Every manufacturer has defined a certain number of miles as lifetime. If you think of it as 100,000 miles, you're gonna be darn close. Look, some will say 150,000, some will say 200,000. Look, 100,000 miles in, in most driving conditions, that's a lot of miles. So, so when you think lifetime fluids, think 100,000 mile fluids. Not really lifetime. And therefore, maintenance is really, really important. We saw in the Technical Knowledge for Service Advisors cooling system program, the job that coolant does, and the important job the cooling, the, the coolant does in protecting and allowing the cooling system to operate. Maintenance is really, really important. If you're gonna create a service, I suggest something like this. You're gonna drain and refill the coolant. You can flush it too if you want. You're gonna replace the drive belts. Now look, if it's driven by the timing belt, that becomes a different conversation. Okay, and, and we'll do a timing belt program at, at some point, but the, the timing belt allows the engine to operate and you really, really need to subscribe to the maintenance interval for the timing belt because if that breaks, that will leave you stranded and it may actually result in a hugely costly repair bill. So if it's, if it's a water pump driven by a timing belt, then we have to have the timing belt discussion along with the cooling system service discussion. They can go hand in hand. I recommend replacing a thermostat as part of cooling system service. Now look, on some vehicles, that's not an easy job. And so you may wanna check with the technician. Don't just sell this, talk to the technician about, hey, can we sell a cooling system service on this? Can, can we include the, the drain and refill, drive belts, thermostat, you know, inspection, radiator cap, and let them tell you, dude, that's a four hour job to replace that thermostat. We don't wanna do that unless that thing goes bad. Okay, because every car is gonna be a little bit different. So it's really, really hard to put a package together for this other than just a, a drain refill and, and maybe an inspection. But as part of that service, whatever it is you offer, you can include inspect it for leaks, inspect the radiator cap, clean the external radiator fins. Those you can do on almost any vehicle. So at the very least, you can do a drain and refill and inspection and replace the radiator cap, all right, as part of that service. And at the very most, you can replace drive belts thermostat, radiator cap, and the coolant flush. So think about what you can offer. Think about how you have those conversations with your technicians, um, especially spring and fall. Spring and fall are great times to talk to your customers about this. There are many, many components, of course, that are affected by the coolant. And this is, this is a list from the, from, you know, from the other class that we did, but the water pump, the thermostat, the heater core, the, the bunch of engine parts, right? Because we, we have corrosion inhibitors in that coolant. Uh, it protects the system from freezing and, and, and you know, overheating. It reduces the likelihood of the check engine light coming on. Lots of things that coolant really, really does. If you're gonna sell any part of that cooling system service, you have to be able to create need recognition. And in doing so, you've gotta be able to talk to the customer about how that system operates, what kinds of failures, replacing the coolant, replacing your radiator cap, uh, replacing a thermostat may prevent, and why more than just the coolant should be replaced. You know, the radiator cap has a very, very important role in that cooling system. It doesn't cost a ton of money, it doesn't cost you anything for us to put it on. I strongly suggest that we go ahead and do that. At the very least, you should be explaining to the customer what replacing the, the coolant is gonna provide the customer, well, not really the customer, but the system, right? And, and you know enough now between the, the Technical Knowledge for Service Advisors program in this program that you can talk to the customer about what that coolant does and, and the important roles that it plays in the cooling system and make the case for why they should strongly consider a cooling system service for reduced repair and maintenance costs to the automobile and longevity of the automobile. If you're gonna do a full service, you're gonna replace the coolant, replace the thermostat, put drive belts on it, and perform a full inspection. And by doing so, we're gonna ensure that we protect engine components, we're gonna reduce the likelihood of the check engine light coming on, and we're gonna reduce the likelihood of any weather-related breakdown, Mr. or Mrs. Customer. 
you say this to them in October when the weather's starting to get cold in parts of the country, or say this in, in May when the weather's starting to get hot in parts of the country, you're gonna, you're gonna take what little they may know about the cooling system and you're gonna connect it to why they should be performing preventative maintenance right now. That's gonna help you get the sale. Why? Because you created need recognition. I recognize that, you know what? This is a good thing to do. I recognize that I need this to protect my automobile and to protect myself from any inconvenience. It's all about creating need recognition. And the more you can educate the customer about what the system is, what it does, and how it operates, the more need recognition you're gonna create with them and the more confidence you're gonna have in having that conversation with them. Even if you just do coolant only. Coolant only is gonna protect engine components from corrosion and cavitation. Whoa, there's a weird word. What's cavitation? Well, cavitation is the formation of bubbles in the coolant. And those bubbles in combination with the spinning impeller of the water pump will actually act like a, like a water drill. And they'll actually cause physical damage to the water pump and the water pump housing. Not a good thing. It can be very expensive to repair. Just doing coolant also protects from freezing. It also protects from overheating if the boiling point's been reduced. And it will remove some debris from the system. So even if we just drain and refill the coolant, that's a good thing for the engine components. Create that need recognition with your own technical knowledge and some of your tools. You know, use the OE recommendations. Use virtual vehicle, use broken pumps. Look, you can, you can show them a water pump that's been destroyed by lack of coolant maintenance and, and that caused cavitation. You can, you can show them a thermostat that's, that's broken, stuck open, stuck closed. Show them a radiator cap that's all nasty and gummed up. You know, stick these things in a Ziploc bag so they don't have to touch them, but they can still see them. Use virtual vehicle. Virtual vehicle has awesome animations and, and, and artwork, <clears throat> well, fixed art, right? And it shows the system, the components of the system, how they operate, what the customer needs to consider. And there's a wow factor to it. Not everybody's using this stuff. And so there's a definite wow factor to it. Customers will feel like you know what you're talking about. Customers will feel like, wow, this shop cares enough to, to show this to me like that. Th this must be serious. Show photos. On the, on the left-hand side, there is a new water pump. On the right-hand side, you can see some holes that have been caused by cavitation damage. It'll actually drill holes in the water pump or the water pump housing. Not good, that's a lack of coolant maintenance. Could even be the wrong coolant was installed. Don't want that. You could show them a thermostat. This one's all nasty and stuck wide open. But save some of those old parts, put them in a Ziploc bag, and keep them under your, under your counter at your desk so you can pull them out and say, look, let me just show you what the internal of your cooling system looks like when you don't change your coolant. And here's what one result was for one of our customers. We hate to see this. So that's why we encourage regular maintenance. I know it will cost you a couple hundred dollars today, but it beats the heck out of an overheated engine in an $800 or $1,800 or $3,000 repair bill. And they'll go, yeah, you know what? You're probably right. Radiator cap. Show them what a sludge up one does. You know enough now to tell them what it does, the purpose of the radiator cap, and why they don't want it to look like this. Customers can look at that, and they can look at new coolant, and they can look at the sludge on there and go, ooh, you know what? That's not good. If that was in my house, that would be bad. And they'll say yes. So you got to combine that little bit of high-level technical knowledge with some good visuals and, and concern for the customer that we want to avoid a $2,000 repair bill by spending an extra couple hundred dollars today. And keep that car on the road because think about what keeping that car on the road longer does for you. That means increased gross profits over the lifetime of the vehicle. That means that customer keeps coming back to you instead of going buying a new vehicle and you don't see them for four years or never again. Have these conversations with your customers. I, I took this picture because it's really bad. This is not just a water pump drive belt, of course, this is the timing belt. This is not what you want your timing belt to look like. Again, we'll do a timing belt program at, at some point, but if the timing belt is what's driving the water pump, express the importance of the timing belt to the overall engine operation, 
encourage the customer to follow the manufacturer's recommended maintenance interval for that timing belt. And while you're in there doing the timing belt, put a water pump on it. For the extra expense, it's well worth it because all the labor is already there. Use your MAP standards. You know, I brought this up in the transmission program as well. The Motorist Assurance Program is intended to help consumers understand why you're, why you're saying the things to them that you're saying. Explain to the customer that the Motorist Assurance Program, and they can go check it out at motorist.org, is for them. And they can go see what the standards are. And, and they can go see why you're using the language that you're using. That, that when we recommend replacement, or replacement is required, here's the standard we use, here's what we mean by this. We mean that the useful life of this component is, is gone, it's done. It no longer functions as it was designed. And because we have, we have taken an online test and we have sworn to uphold these standards, you can trust it. When we say it needs it, it needs it. And, and let them go verify it themselves. You know, here's the uh, preventative maintenance. We generally suggest a repair or replacement, right? And, and here are the four reasons that we are suggesting this, Mr. and Mrs. Customer. The part's close to the useful end of its life. If it was a required replacement, then it wouldn't be close to the useful end of its life. It would have met the end of its useful life. But we're recommending it because it is close to the useful end of its life, or end of its useful life, I should say. We recommend it to address your concern. You came to us, you said, here's your concern. Here's why we're recommending it. It's in the OE maintenance recommendations, number three. Or number four, our technician, they know what goes wrong with this make model year vehicle, and they're strongly recommending it to avoid X happening in the future, all right? It's always optional, we're just making the suggestion. Here's why we're making the suggestion, and, and you can give them reason one, two, three, or four, and they can see that, you know what, this is a standard. It's a form of communication and a form of reassurance, thus Motorist Assurance Program. Use your MAP standards. If you're a TechNet shop, you have access to it. You just need to become certified. Take the online test. It's free. It's quick. It's easy. You will pass it. So please do it. If you're not a TechNet shop, go to motorist.org. Check out what it would take to meet those MAP standards. Take your test and become MAP certified. In summary, the cooling system is integral to proper engine operation and emissions control and longevity of the vehicle. The coolant alone is a really, really, really important part of that system. And that makes cooling system maintenance really important, right? Because it prevents all kinds of future problems down the line, future expensive problems sometimes. If you're gonna convey that to a customer, you've gotta create need recognition with the customer as to why they need to have the service performed. Use your visuals, use your technical knowledge. And until we meet again, keep up the great work and never stop learning.